After specifying the hypothesis, the next step is to choose the statistic test and to compute its value. Uh, we have two hypothesis. There are two types of hypothesis that we test. It's either testing the mean or testing the proportion. If we are testing hypothesis concerning mean value, then there are two statistic tests that we can use. The first is the z-test and the second is the t-test. So when do we use between the two? We use t-test if population standard deviation is unknown. And we use the sample standard deviation instead to calculate the test statistic. If population standard deviation is known, we use the Z statistic with the following formula. For population proportion, we definitely will, will use the Z statistic. And um, we must find out first whether the pro population proportion follow a normal distribution. To do that, we just need to calculate uh, using this formula where n is our number, uh, our sample observation, number of sample observation, p is our population proportion, n times p has to be greater or equal to 5, and n times 1 minus p has to be greater or equal to 5. If this is fulfilled, then we can uh, continue with our hypothesis testing. Um, this uh, test statistic is mainly used if we use the critical value approach and we will compare this test statistic with the critical value. The next step is to specify the rejection rule. There are two things we have to consider. The first is whether use a p-value approach or the critical value approach. It is our prerogative to choose which approach we want to use. We will, we will discuss each of the method further in the next video. The second is to determine whether we are conducting a two-tail or a one-tail. If it is a one-tail, is it a right or a left tail? As a guidance to know what type of test we shall do, two-tail or one-tail, we can use the hypothesis table and determine by seeing the H alternative. If the H alternative is a greater than or a smaller, then we are conducting a one tail. Right tail if it is a great, greater than or a left tail if the H alternative has a smaller than symbol. Two tail if the H alternative is not equal to. Another important ingredient concerning the rejection rule is the assumption of significant significant level. We usually symbolize it as alpha. This alpha is the value of our tolerance in creating a type 1 error. We will discuss the type 1 error in our next session. In fields that need high precision, usually an, an error is intolerable. Thus, the alpha would maybe be 1% or less. But, but in economic, we usually use alpha 1%, 5%, or 10 percent. This value of significance level will be used to construct the rejection rule. If we draw it in our probability distribution curve, the rejection area using the information of our significant level would look like this um, green area. So the alpha, the rejection rule, is denoted by the, these green areas. For a one-tail left-tail test, the rejection rule is this area, this is a one-tail right-tail, and this is a two-tail. And remember, 
for a two tail the area the each of the area is actually alpha divided by two so if you assume the alpha is five percent then each of this area is two and a half percent and as you know that the area under the curve is uh, the probability so we can say that this area if the alpha is five percent the probability of type one error is five percent and the probability of type two error in each of this area is uh, two and a half percent now let us continue in discussing each of the approach the um, critical value approach and the p-value approach.